Another major international challenge is Iran. The Iranian government recently expressed openness to the U.S. rejoining the 2015 nuclear deal. But they asked for an EU mediator to get everyone in full compliance. The U.S. would lift its sanctions while Iran would stop developing its nuclear program. But the U.S. was not willing unless Iran acted first. And with neither side willing to bend, the future of the deal remains up in the air. I'm joined now by Benham Ben Talablu. He's senior fellow with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies right here in Washington. Benham, it's good to see you again. You know, I know you were not a huge fan of the previous agreement, but objectively speaking, why won't President Biden get back in this right away? Because, you know, he seemed to be on board when President Obama did it. Well, great to be with you again. And an excellent question, and it has to do with timing. Timing is everything. The Middle East of 2021 is not at all the Middle East of 2015-16 when that agreement, the JCPOA, was agreed to. Uh, moreover, inside this 140-plus uh, page document called the JCPOA, there are things called sunset clauses, meaning restrictions lapse over time. The U.S. has already passed one of them, which is in October 2020, an arms embargo was lifted on Iran internationally. Uh, and there are other uh, much worse uh, restrictions that are, are soon set to lapse. So I think the Biden team is waiting to try to renegotiate or find a way to phase in compliance. We hear Antony Blinken, our new Secretary of State, say Iran's breakout time to have a nuclear weapon, just three or four months. Israel recently said six months, but both of those are incredibly close. The stakes are so high here. Indeed, the stakes are very high, and I, I think, unfortunately, Iran is escalating on all fronts, on the missile front, nuclear front, regional front, because uh, it knows the Biden team wants to dampen the prospects for conflict. It knows the Biden team uh, wants ultimately a diplomatic victory. So it's going to raise the cost on, on, on all accounts, whether it's on the nuclear or otherwise. So this makes nuclear diplomacy and missile diplomacy with the Islamic Republic even harder. What is an achievable deal? They're not going to lay down all their arms. They're not going to roll over. And the U.S. isn't either. What's achievable? Achievable is really to say that U.S. partners in the region don't have domestic enrichment on their soil. Iran shouldn't have it either when it's a U.S. adversary, especially when there's so many violations, not just of the JCPOA, but of the NPT and its safeguards agreement. So an achievable agreement weaponizes time, weaponizes this economic leverage, waits back, has Tehran come to Washington ultimately. It'll take time. It'll be risky. Uh, but I think that is actually achievable. There is light at the end of the tunnel. I don't think so. You said no more enrichment. I don't think that's achievable, Benham. That's no. There, why not? There was a pause in enrichment before. Uh, uh, what, has why not, not? I guess the past 20 years? They did pause enrichment to 20% purity from 2013 to January of this year. So that was one check. The second check is that Iran uh, began enriching in 2006 when its file was referred to the Security Council in the, uh, from the IAEA and sanctions commenced. But from 2006, Iran has not stopped enriching at low grades. There were diplomatic deals between the Europeans and the Iranians from 2002 to 2005. And the Europeans didn't want Iran to enrich then. And they were successful at getting Iran not to enrich then. And more importantly, if Iran is so committed to even enriching at low levels, when it has no national economic need, no national technical need for it, the question's on you, Chance. Why should the Islamic Republic be permitted enrichment on its own soil when it has no need? Unless, of course, there's a weapons dimension to it. Well, I'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying uh, about whether they should or should not be doing this. But the word achievable, unless you're going to do it by force at this point or gather all of our allies to somehow make this happen, that's not achievable. And I'm, I just want to live in reality. I do, too. And the reality is that there were five U.N. Security Council resolutions before this fatally flawed nuclear deal uh, that uh, wanted to achieve exactly what you and I were saying. Uh, you know, the, the cleavage that has emerged as a result of the 2015 deal called the JCPOA. Previously, uh, it was the U.S., the EU, uh, the Russians and Chinese even calling for a cessation of enrichment activities on Iranian soil. This is how far we've negotiated with ourselves. And the key for a Biden team to make an achievable agreement is to first begin negotiating with its partners and adversaries. Don't begin negotiating with ourselves. Ben and Bentalablu with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Uh, so, I mean, this topic is so important, but so complicated. Thank you for coming back again as this develops. Pleasure. Thank you. Great fun as always.